I call on point of order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, at the beginning of question time, you made a ruling on uh, a member's bill introduced by An Andrew Little, the Healthy Homes Guarantee Bill Number Two. Can I have uh, the point of order, please? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. So, I had to tell you what it was about, uh, Mr. Speaker. I've had the opportunity to uh, read that ruling carefully, um, and it is an unprecedented ruling. We couldn't find any example of where a member's bill has been uh, deemed out of order after it had been introduced. Um, I want to draw your attention to Speaker's Ruling One One Five Bar One. And in that particular speaker's ruling, it deals with the issue of where two members' bills are lodged into the ballot with basically the same content or similar content or content um, that, in the, that could be deemed to be similar. And in that, case, in that particular instance, it establishes very clearly the precedent that, a ballot, that the issue should be resolved before a ballot is taken. So in this case, there would have to be a pre-ballot if two bills were, um, were drawn out of the ballot with the same content. Therefore, therefore, Mr Speaker, establishes a fairly clear expectation by members that if there is an issue, a problem with the content of the bill, that it will be resolved before a ballot is taken. And I draw your further attention to uh, Standing Order 278 Bar 3 that says that it is only possible for a member to have one bill in the ballot at any given time. Therefore, if there is a problem with a bill that a member has in the ballot, and this bill has been in the ballot and published on the website for four months, it is incumbent. We, I think there is a reasonable expectation on the part of the member that that would be resolved before a ballot is conducted. Uh, Mr Speaker, I have been further advised that the Can Office of the Leader of the Opposition sought advice from the clerk's office and was assured that, 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 in fact, this bill met standing orders. I therefore would ask, Mr Speaker, uh, we must have the, the members of this House must be able to have confidence that the advice they receive from the clerk's office is, is, is in fact accurate. I therefore ask, Mr Speaker, that you withdraw the ruling pending further consideration of the matter by either the Standing Orders Committee or the Business Committee. I'll hear from Tim McIndoe. So it seems to me that the difficulty uh, with the particular Speaker's ruling that the Chief Opposition Whip is relying upon is that that essentially refers to two bills that are drawn out of the ballot at the same time, whereas your ruling, sir, relates to one where a bill has already been defeated in the calendar year. And so I want to suggest that the two are not the same. I accept the fact that there is a significant issue for you to look at, but I just make the point that I don't believe that the two situations are the same. Point of order, no, Mr. No, Speaker. I need no further order. assistance. The members had plenty of opportunity to explain his position. Um, I have given considerable thought to this matter. And I think I have charted a very fair way forward on this case. The member's very first point is right. This is the first time that this has ever happened. If the member, um, he may well have read the ruling. I think I added a little more to the ruling when I delivered it. But I made the point that in my mind, this bill should never have been accepted. If advice was given that it was acceptable, I don't accept that that advice was right. Mistakes do happen. I therefore needed to chart a way forward subsequent to the bill being uh, drawn out of the ballot, and I think I have fairly, very fairly uh, found a mechanism for that to move forward, but I repeated it, I stated at the very end of the ruling that I expect far more scrutiny to take place from the clerk and his staff before bills are accepted into the uh, ballot in the first place. I think uh, we are creating history here. I hope we don't have an opportunity to see it repeated, but I think I've given a very fair way forward for this particular case, and I don't intend to review the decision at all. Uh, this is a fresh point of order, I take it? Uh, yes, it is, sir. I certainly hope we're not relitigating. No, no, I'm not, sir. The Honourable David Parker. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, my point of order relates to what is meant by a difference of substance, sir. If, for example, the Labor Party was to present a bill to say that income tax rates should go up or down by 1% and it failed, and then another party was to present a member's bill that said uh, uh, tax rates should go up by 2% or down by 2%, that would be a difference in substance, sir. I don't, think a, uh, a, 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 I don't think it has to be a different subject matter for it to be a difference of substance, sir. And I think that we get on a slippery slope if you 
uh, as Speaker, try to uh, interpret what is a difference in substance in uh, such a narrow and particular way. Well, well, and, uh, and again, this point I've covered quite adequately earlier to a point of order raised by the member's colleagues, Grant Robertson. You cannot define the difference in substance exactly at this stage. It will depend on the circumstances. In the particular case I'm dealing with, one bill, the only change that uh, has been identified to me was the previous one had uh, ECA, uh, Energy Conservation Authority, as the, as the uh, monitor of the situation. This one changed, takes it to MB, the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment, and of course ECA actually comes under the auspices. So in this case I'm quite satisfied that the change was minimal and so minimal we're dealing with the same situation, but I accept the point the member has made around tax rates, a what looks like a relatively minor nominal value could be quite a significant impact. That will be a discussion that will occur at the time between the clerk and the speaker of the day. Is there a further fresh point of order? Because I don't intend to litigate this any further. But I'm happy if it's a fresh point of order. Clarification, sir. Because how, how can the speaker know the basis upon which members cast a vote in favour or for of legislation? Members could uh, say, well, actually, I didn't like that legislation because I didn't think it should be MB, it should be ECA. You can't order. know that, no, as no, speaker, no. sir. Order. We've now got the situation where we're just relitigating a decision of gun. In this particular case, the rules are quite clear uh, with standing orders. A bill that has been defeated can't be brought back almost exactly the same in a calendar year. In my opinion, that is what has happened. I have found a way forward by which I haven't ruled it out of order at this stage. If it was to come forward in this calendar year, I would do so, and I've clearly made that statement to the House. If the member bothers to look at the order paper, the chances of that happening are indeed very, very slim. So I think we've found a way forward, but I, the point made by um, Chris Hipkins is this is the first time it's ever happened. It is a precedent. I hope it never happens again. I'm not prepared to enter on an, no, we're now wasting a lot of time. If it's a fresh point of order, happy to hear it, but it's nothing to do with the ruling I gave earlier. Point, of order, point of order, Mr Speaker, I simply ask you to reconsider the last part of my ruling, which is to take the matter to the Business Committee or the Standing Orders Committee, because the effect of the ruling that you have just made is that members can have no confidence in the advice they receive from the Office of the Clerk, and order, that cannot no, be allowed order, to stand. That is not, not a fair statement at all. I gave this considerable thought. I um, sought counsel before I made this decision. At order. Order. If the member wants to leave the chamber by interjecting while I'm on my feet, he's going the right way about it. I gave considerable thought to this issue. As I've said, I think I've charted a very for, uh, fair path forward, and I don't intend to relitigate the matter. I call on government order of the day number one.